Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining Tips for the Transition, the Career Roadmap podcast. I'm Maria Tomas Keegan. And my vision for this show is to create resources with each episode that help women navigate career and life challenges more easily, maybe more gracefully, and to know that they are not alone. So with each weekly conversation, our goal is to inspire women to become more confident, resilient, and brave in their lives and careers. So if something strikes a chord as you're listening, and you want more information, just check the show notes below for ways to contact my guest and me. So what does the word toxic conjure for you? If you look it up, the first words you'll see are poisonous, destructive, dangerous, and pervasive. I, I don't care who you are, however you slice the, that those words don't paint a welcoming picture at all. Yet I meet many women who use that word to describe their work environment. So let's talk about everyday toxic work experiences, why people stay in them, the long-term impact of them, and how to leave them with my next guest. Julia Toothaker is a colleague coach career coach and strategist who equips ambitious professionals with strategies and action plans to control and advance their careers. With over a decade of experience in career development, teaching and coaching, Julia has helped thousands of professionals find clarity and supported them in their career exploration, management and advancement. As an experienced career coach with a counseling focused master's degree and multiple certifications, Julia uses her knowledge to create clear action oriented content. So let's talk now with Julia about navigating toxic work environments. Hello, Thank Julia. You. How are you? Hello. I'm so happy to be here, Maria. Thank you so much for having me. I am going to get this right here in a second. <laughs> da, 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 da. There we go. Here we oh, go. there we go. <laughs> Don't you love technology when it of works? Course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me, though. I'm so happy to be here. Um, this is a hard topic to talk about, but it's very much needed. And I'm, I'm happy to be here to shine some light on it for your audience. That's perfect. It, you know, it's on the hearts and minds of a lot of women I meet, I'm sure that you do too. So let's hear a little bit about your backstory, Julia. How, how have you come to know something about toxic workplaces? Yeah, so this is definitely part of my story. And I, I like to point out to people that I am a career coach. I'm trained as a career coach who happen to experience toxic environments. And I think that's a really important distinction because some people go through something and then become something. And I think that's great. But I'm actually trained to do this. And then I happen to, to be in those environments. Um, I had a couple of different experiences where I've had toxic management situations and then toxic culture or environment situations. And these were at points in my career where I felt like I was doing all the right things. You know, I was showing up. I'm a high achiever, high performer. And I, it just took me out to be in situations where I had managers who didn't know how to support me. And some of them, I understood the situation and I saw it for what it was, but there were other situations where the person was just not kind to me and not kind to others. And so it really changed my view of management and what was appropriate and how, how do you work with people and what does that look like, even if you have your own issues that you're bringing into it. Um, and then from a toxic environment standpoint, I always like to make sure that people understand there's a difference between an environment that's not a good fit and a toxic environment. And I felt like I was in an environment that wasn't a good fit, but had toxic elements 
within it. And so it was kind of a combination of the two. And what's interesting was once I left that environment, I had no idea really how much it had impacted me. Mm. And so, yeah, so it's really interesting when we go through those experiences, sometimes when we're in it, we have no idea how bad it is till we get out and we're like, oh. That's often the case. That was pretty bad. I'm I'm really glad you made that distinction uh, that it's uh, toxic or just not a good fit. They don't, they are not mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. They can have, both things can happen at once. But it's interesting that you bring that up because a lot of my clients feel like they're in a toxic work environment. And when we dig under it, it really is that it's just not a good fit for them. Mm -hmm. It feels bad. Yeah. Because it's not a good fit. Right. Let's talk about the kind of the different toxic situations. So you were Mm -hmm. talking about having toxic elements in in your situation that wasn't a good fit. Let's talk about what kind of toxic situations that people might be experiencing and what are maybe some of the common ones. Yeah. So one of the ones that I mentioned was management. And I feel like that is probably at the top of the list for most people. Uh, When you think about toxic management, one of the things that I I always want to let people know is you have to look at the situation for what it is. And so similar to when we're talking about environments, when it comes to management, you have to look at your manager and go, is this person out to get me? Or are they in a situation where they have to behave a certain way and it's impacting the way that I'm working. Because I think that there are certain managers, as I said, that I had who are not kind. And that is truly toxic. That is somebody who is bringing a really negative um, environment to, or a negative perspective to the environment that they're in. And so they're pushing you, but maybe they're pushing you in a really negative way that's not great for you, right? And when we think about it that way, I want you to think about what is the context of your manager? Where are they coming from? Are they, are they a messenger for something else? Right. Or are they truly just not a nice person, you know? And I say that because we have to make sure that whatever the situation is, is the reality of the situation. Because what ends up happening is if we have situations that have impacted us in the past, we can project that onto other people. And so when we're thinking about management, a lot of times when I'm working with clients, they have people that they report to, people that they work with. And I'm like, give me an example. Give me a specific example of how this person has been mean to you, rude to you. What have they actually done? And if they can give me an example that is legitimately toxic, then I'm like, okay, we validated it. That's absolutely the, a toxic situation. But in some cases, I sit there and I'm like, mm, did you perceive that a certain way? <laughs> you know, it, did they actually mean it the way that they said it? What's the context? Where is it coming from? You know, all of that. Because the worst thing that you can do is project what's going on for you onto somebody else. And again, that's not to say that that other person isn't toxic. They might actually be but you have to make sure that you're approaching the situation with a very clear head and going, okay, yes, this is a bad situation and here's why. So for example, I had a manager who yelled at another person right in front of me um, and just completely reprimanded them. And I was like, oh, that's not good. That's a very, that's an example of a very toxic person. Um, you know, somebody else who made comments about my uh, wardrobe and my weight and my size and all of that. That's an example of somebody who's a very toxic person versus somebody who is setting really high expectations for you in your position. And you're just not in a place where you're ready to meet them. And you're like, why are they pushing me? Why are they doing this? Ah." 
that's not necessarily toxic. That person's just trying to push you. But if you're coming, you know, from some kind of issues or from the past, you're doubting yourself, something like that, then you might receive that in a different way. And so we really want to break some of that down. So management is absolutely going to be one of the number one um, toxic, toxic situations that people deal with. You know, I think that's so true. Uh, and the, the, the examples that you're citing uh, really require us to step back for a minute and really kind of assess the reality of the situation mm -hmm. without, a, you know, a, a colored lens on that may, it may feel uh, it may feel toxic in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing that we have to take notice of is whether it is a one-time event or it is a chronic situation. It's just the way they are. That person right. who is unkind. He's unkind to everybody. She uh, calls people out in front of everybody else all the time. That creates an environment that is, is, is not conducive to doing your best work. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, you hit it right on the nose. Is it a specific situation that is impacting that person for that one time, you know, because we all have to remember people have lives outside of work. That's right. And sometimes bad things happen and that creates, you know, sometimes you just lash out, you have a moment, you know, and was it a moment or was it multiple moments? And is that just how that person is? And so digging into the reality of what is actually happening, I think is so important. And a lot of people push back on me for that. Because it's like, oh, you're blaming the person, you know, they're in this toxic environment and you're blaming them. It's like, I'm not blaming them at all, mm -mm. but they have to understand the root of what is going on because if they change positions and go to a new, uh, a new environment with a new manager and have the same issues, then it tells me that there's something going on with them internally in how they're viewing management. Yeah. And we have to deal with that before you make a transition. So I, so I want you to break all of that down, even from an environment standpoint, you, a lot of times with environment, it's a mismatch of values, right? right. So the company is doing something that does not align with you, or they made a choice or something like that. Now you have a misalignment. Well, you have to understand what that misalignment is because you don't want that in the next company. And so you want to make sure that you're, you know, weeding that out as you're looking at other organizations. Right. And that in and of itself does not necessarily constitute a toxic environment. Absolutely. It's not. It's a, like you say, it's a, it's a misalignment. It just doesn't, it's not a good fit. Right. It, it has, and it might have been a good fit to start. And then things changed organizationally. Mm-hmm. New Absolutely. managers came in, new leadership at the top, new values, right? Mm -hmm. Come may come with that. And when things turn change, right? When they change right. and it just doesn't feel good anymore. Right, right. Toxic One thing I will things say can happen. When that yeah. happens, toxic things, behaviors can happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. People are reacting. You know, right. they're reacting to what's happening to them right? and they're frustrated. And again, you don't know what's happened in somebody's past, you know, to understand why they're reacting the way that they are. But you bring up a good point. And I know this isn't our, our topic, but I want to say this for people who are in management in any way. Understanding change management and understanding the steps that you need to take in order to create the best environment when you're going through change is so important. So it if is. your team is shifting, if you've gone through a merger, if something big is going on as a people manager, get a book on change management, like read about, I think it's John Cotter talks about um, change management, like understand it because once you understand it, you will be such a better leader to lead your people through, through and it. you have less of a chance of losing them 
through all of that change. Right. That's so, so that's, I'm glad you brought that up because that understanding how, how that kind of a change can impact people, right? When, when they don't know what's going on, when, when they're not in the know and they're just kind of seeing things happening, hearing about things, but nothing has been validated or verified. It makes for a very tenuous situation for everybody. Yes. yes. Yeah. So uh, leadership absolutely needs to understand how to help their teams through. Right. Change. Right. Well, and yeah. I'll, I'll give you a quick example of something that happened to me to kind of put that into perspective of how <laughs> these things actually happen. Uh, we changed leadership and that leader had a perspective of our department that really wasn't accurate, but it was the external perspective that certain people had. They came in and basically gave us a laundry list of everything that was wrong with our department, but without any context. Mm -hmm. And so what they didn't understand was how far we had come in previous years and the growth that we had had and all of these things that we had done they didn't know any of that. They didn't take the time to know or understand. So those of us who had helped really build this out were sitting there completely offended sure. because this person came in and basically said, everything that you've done for the last couple of years doesn't mean anything because it's all awful. And I was sitting there like, if you had seen it when I came in, right. you would have a completely different perspective. And so that immediately made us defensive yeah. and it made it hard, you know, to enact change moving forward. Then fast forward, I think it was about nine months or so, we got a new uh, director basically who was in between us and this other person. That person came in and said, okay, here's everything that I was told, you know, tell me what it is for you. And that person listened to us and said, I don't understand what the problem is. It sounds like you guys are doing everything that they yeah. wanted. And I said, we know, <laughs> Yeah. but there's a perception that we're not. And so it's this miscommunication, but also not taking the time to understand the context of where a team or an employee has been to understand how some of these things are going to impact them, which then can, you know, snowball into a lot of toxic behaviors. Right, right, right. And that's, you're right. That's how those misunderstandings, those lack of listening to learn uh, kind of behaviors uh, can lead people to judge uh, without basis and uh, and and that can turn into toxic behavior mm -hmm. so to the, back to the point you made in the beginning we really do need to understand what's really going on is and try and really dig under it if you can mm -hmm. and be sure it's not you be sure you're not the stuff isn't going on for you that's causing you to behave in a certain way that maybe isn't you Mm -hmm. or who you want to show up as, um, and the same for, for other people. That's so important. All right, so we've established there's a, a lot of possibilities here that can create toxicity mm -hmm. in a work environment. Um, I'd love to hear your perspective on why people stay when they are in a toxic work situation? Why do you think that is? Yeah, this is a really good question uh, because I have I have seen it all, unfortunately. Mm. Um, I've experienced it myself and then I've seen it uh, with clients as well. So <clears throat> one of the main reasons that I see people stay is they don't think that they can leave. And that can be for a lot of different reasons. So in my case, I didn't think that I could leave because I didn't believe in my skill set enough. And I didn't think that I had what I needed to be able to move out of that position and out of that organization. And part of the reason for that 
was how I had been treated by management. And I had basically been told, you know, you, you're doing great, but you don't have what it takes to be a leader. You don't have what it takes to do this. I'm not putting you in this role. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. So even though I had received such high praise up until this person came in, that person really took my confidence away. And I felt like I didn't have what it took to, to move out of that. Ironically, I did end up moving out uh, because I got referred into a position and ended up leading and completely um, creating a new department at another organization based on what I had done at that organization. So I'm good now with my confidence, but a lot of times that's what it is, is you feel like I can't leave for whatever reason, you know, it's you, you want to stay for the pension. If it offers a pension, I've seen that happen with a lot of people who work in government and certain parts of education. Um, They're, they're locked by location. They don't think that they have a lot of options because of where they live. Uh, Maybe they work in a family business and they don't feel like they can leave because they're part of the family, (laughs) you know? So there are a lot of these things that we tell ourselves, I can't leave because I can't leave because at the end of the day, you can leave. It doesn't mean that that's not going to have repercussions and you have to understand what those repercussions are, but you can always leave. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yes, you know, you you bring it, there there could be repercussions, but the it's the the planning for that that's yes. important, isn't it? Yes. yes. So you're absolutely right. You can leave if it doesn't fit, if it doesn't feel good, if you are being bullied at work, you don't belong there. Right. And and if it's not going to change and you recognize that it is a pattern within the organization. It is accepted behavior and it doesn't feel good to you. Then you, sh- you, you need to find a way to put yourself in a better situation where you, you do fit and uh, it doesn't become what I like to call a soul sucking experience. Right. Right. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, the family business piece of it, that's, that's a, the that's hardest a one. A little that's... kludgy. <laughs> that, <laughs> but there are ways to have conversations and you just need to work with someone like us. You know, those mm-hmm. are the kinds of conversations I have with my clients all the time. And I know you do, too, that, you know, we just talk it out. So what right. if you what if you approached it this way? Mm-hmm. So let's play devil's advocate. What what would happen if. You talked about it this way. Yeah. What if you said this? Those are the kinds of conversations you can you can kind of practice. Right. And what ends up happening in those conversations is the person will say, but they'll say this, but they'll do this. And I'm like, but you don't know that. Right. You're projecting what you think Road is going to happen because you've created something in your head right. of how they're going to react. And the reality is if they react the way that you think that they do, then do you want to be in that environment anyway? And, and even if they do, you can prepare for that too. Right. Right. So, Absolutely. all right. So what if they do react that way? How do you want to respond to that? Mm-hmm. So that yep. you can, you know, literally stand in your power and uh, and and face whatever the response is going to be. Yeah. And I'll tell you, for people who have really high anxiety um, or who tend to be a little more introverted, because I know as an introvert, sometimes in those situations, I have a hard time thinking on my feet yeah. because I'm taken back by what's happening. And so running through those conversations and scenarios is so helpful to just have it top of mind to be able to say when, when, and if it does happen. Yeah. Yeah. Because it can feel like a personal attack, right? Which Mm -hmm. makes us defensive, right? Everyone responds that way. Yeah. Okay. I want to share one more thing about why people leave toxic situations, because I see this happen a lot, especially in helping professions. And it's that people feel obligated to 
uh, to stay or to be connected because they're connected to somebody. So whether that is the team that they're on, the clientele that they serve, like they feel this internal obligation. If I leave, who is going to be there for this person? Who is going to support these clients? You know, what is going to happen? How is this program going to continue on? You know, all of that. Like I said, this is more specific if you're in a helping profession or you have a team that you really like. Um, but that's one of those situations where, again, you have to help yourself first because you're not going to show up well for any of those people if you are reacting to a toxic environment, if you are constantly burnt out, if you're constantly on edge, it's not fair to them either. And at the end of the day, they'll understand why you left. You know, they'll get it. And most people already know, honestly, <laughs> why you're leaving. And they'll probably start to look at their own situation and think, oh, well, maybe I should too, right? Maybe yeah. this is not a good fit for me either. Right. Well, yeah. like, I left my, I stayed in my position purely because I loved the population I was working with mm -hmm. and I loved my immediate coworkers and it was, that was the nice part of what I was doing, but it kept me there so much longer than it should have because I felt this connection of where I'm like, I don't want to lose this. Yeah. You know, this feels so good. I had a really good friend that I worked with and I was like, I don't want to leave that person, you know? Yeah. And I had programs that I was doing and all of that. And the reality is I left and half the stuff I worked on completely just stopped and they never picked it up. And yeah. I had to tell myself, not my circus, not my monkeys. They are yeah. making those choices and there's nothing I can do about that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And although we feel bad that, you know, we weren't there to continue to serve that population, those clients, we feel bad. And, and we, we, that's normal, right. but you're right. It's not, it is not, it's not your problem. Yeah. All right, you, you touched on a couple of the kind of signals people might get that could um, clue them into the fact that it might be time to move yeah. on, to explore other options for themselves. You talked about um, burnout. What are some of the other signals that we should pay attention to? that it might be it might be time to look for something else. Yeah. Well, I will say on burnout, uh, I did not know that I was burnt out until I left. Uh, and I feel like that is really specific to people who are high performers because you are constantly pushing through everything. And I don't think you recognize what's going on when it's going on. Um, so that wasn't actually a trigger for me. Um, it was just something that I ended up learning later. Uh, but one of the top things I think is there's no support for you. Um, and so that can look different. So whether it's you, ha you don't have communication with your manager or your manager doesn't treat you well, there's just no support for you on a day-to-day -day basis to do your work. I think that's a low level um, indication. I think that's when you start to go, what's going on here? Like, is this the environment I want to be in if I'm not being supported in any way? And if you couple that with consistent, as we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. um, consistent, repetitive behavior that's negative, and you start tracking that, which track it always, always, you start tracking that and going, huh, this seems to be something that's happening all the time, all the time. The problem is we we talk it away. You know, oh, it's this situation, it's that situation, because we're trying to justify staying in the position. But I think when you put pen to paper and you're writing these things down and you're tracking it, you start to see the pattern. And that gives you kind of the fuel to go, I don't think this is a good situation, I think I need to think about transitioning out of it. Um, similarly, when I say support, it's also there's no growth. So there's nowhere for you to go. Nobody's supporting you to go anywhere. 
And so if you sit there and tell me I'm not a good leader, you bring in another leader. Well, now what am I supposed to do? Just stay in this position forever until you decide, you know, that I'm a good leader, even though I've been leading the team, you know, for a year. So you have to then step back and go, is this the place that I want to stay in long term? Do I want to grow here? What does this look like? And I should, I should give a little caveat here. I work with really high achieving, high performing clients. And so growth is a really big deal. If, Mm -hmm. if you're not helping me grow either my skill set, my connections within the company, then I'm, that's automatically a red flag. There are some people who don't want that. (laughs) They're good with their position. They want to stay growth for them might mean more skills growth than growth within the company. So I do like to make that distinction because that's not going to be a sign for everyone. Um, I think support is really the the overarching thing. Are you getting the support that you need from that person or are they micromanaging you too much or completely ignoring you? Right. You know, and what does that look like for you? You know, I think you, you, you didn't say these words, but this is what comes to mind as I hear you talking about that, those those different situations. I think what we all need to land on firmly is what do we want? What will make us happy? What will fulfill us, will make us feel like we're doing meaningful work? I think everybody wants that, no Mm -hmm. matter what they do or what whatever level they are at. And no one deserves to be bullied, mistreated, uh, for any of those other toxic behaviors. No one, no one deserves that. Right. So I will say, I think, I think we just have to know what do we want instead of what we have. And to add to that, because this happens a lot with my clients, they'll say, Oh, my manager's not supporting me. You know, they're a horrible people manager, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, have you told them what you need. (laughs) So to your point, you have to know how you need to be managed and what you need from a manager. If you're earlier in your career, that might take a little bit of time for you to understand. Mm -hmm. But if you're more in the mid career space, you know, you know who you work well with, you know, what kind of support you need. And you need to be able to go to your manager and say, look, this is how I work best. This is the type of support that I need. And if, and if then they completely disregard you and don't help you through that, then that's another sign to me that right. you're not in the right place or you don't have the right manager. And then how do you make those adjustments? Right. Also understanding that not every manager can support you the way that you need, depending on the context and the situation and their availability. So and there's skill, a lot of caveats their, in there. <laughs> and their skill level, right? As a manager, right. as a leader, right? That that there are so many people who are put into management and leadership positions who aren't ready for that. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, the people who report up to them suffer the consequences of that and understanding that that's the case uh i think is an important um uh, an important thing that we have to kind of uncover Mm -hmm. and and it this takes some drilling down and 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 getting brutally honest with yourself about what role you might be playing Mm -hmm. in this environment um and you, you said you, you need to talk to your manager and let them know what you need. You have to also ask for it, right? right. So right. ask if, if they are able to provide that to you. Mm-hmm. And if the mm-hmm. answer to that is no, that's a pretty clear indication that you're not going to get what you need. And maybe this isn't the right place for you right now. Right, right. Yeah. I think, too, understanding if you can, given whatever information is available to you, understanding your manager's context. And so even the most toxic manager leader that I had, even though the behavior was not good and very unkind, 
I still understood the context that that person was coming from. And I, I did that because I was like, what I, you know, I'm about people. How do I pick people apart, figure out how they tick? You know, as a coach, that's kind of what we do. Yeah. And I was doing that to my manager because I'm like, why are you acting this way? Yeah, <laughs> what yeah. is going on? Yeah. And so that allowed me to become more observant of what their situation was and really hear them in a different way. So I understood their context and I had empathy within that. What I didn't stand for was the treatment and then the right. behavior that came out of it. Because I'm like, you had a choice of how to treat us and how to treat these people. And you chose the wrong way. <laughs> to be you unkind know. for some reason. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. So let's say someone has come to a decision that they want to, to make a move, make a transition from where they are now to something else. From your perspective, what actions should they take during that time and, and after that time? So one of the first actions we actually already talked about, which is uh, understanding the reality of your situation. What is actually happening? Why do you want to leave? And be able to clearly articulate that so that you understand what you need in the next position. And so some of that gets lumped into just being clear on who you are. So what skills are you bringing to the table? What motivates you in your work? You know, who are you at your core? And what is happening in your current position that you love? And what is happening that you don't love? Because you don't want to go to the next organization, the next position, the next manager, harboring all these things and not asking the right questions to make sure that you don't end up, you know, in the same boat that you're in currently. And obviously you can't always account for that, but as much as possible, being able to say, this is who I am. This is what I'm looking for. This is what I need to be successful. That will help you weed out so much when you're doing your job search and you're trying to figure out what's next. Um, so I feel like that is the most important thing that a lot of people will overlook because what happens is you are so frustrated and yeah. you're so burnt out from this toxic situation that you basically start rage applying to things. You're like, I need to get out of here and you start, you know, just applying to anything you can. Um, while sometimes I think that can be effective. Uh, it actually, in a toxic situation, is better for you to take a step back and really evaluate yourself, where you're at, what is going on before you start to make that transition. Once you, un uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, I, you, 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 you nailed that. I, I see it so many times. Um, people will come to me and say, I don't understand why the last three positions that I've been in have turned out to be the same thing. And, you know, once we drill down and kind of pull the, uh, peel the onion back, right? It gets, it, we get very clear on the fact that they never, when they left one position and started another one, they never did that inner work to understand who am I now that things have changed, mm -hmm. right? Because we evolve. Yes. What do I need? What do I want? Mm -hmm. And now how do I get it? How do yes. I make that happen? So that we don't repeat that pattern. Yeah. And, and it happens all the time. It happens so much. All and it, yeah. it breaks my heart when Me I too. hear, you know, people, I transitioned out and it's still bad. It's still bad. And I'm like, please hire a coach. <laughs> like, please yeah. Do right. Something. Yeah. To unpack what's going on. Because the other thing too, I mean, you have toxicity within work, but also life, things that happen in your life will also impact your work and will change your values, will change your motivations. You have to understand that about yourself. If you don't understand that, it can take you out so well, look quickly. what happened with the pandemic and how many, how many people's value, how many values changed for people just as a, a result of 
being forced, right? Absolutely. To to sequester at home for so long and then mm -hmm. realize, you know what? My family really is very important to me. Yeah. Yeah. And now going back to the work environment with that as a number one value, mm -hmm. family first, which wasn't the case previously. Yeah. They were there, yeah. but they, you know, family was important, but it wasn't right. number one. Right. Yeah. It right. changes. It changes everything. Yeah. When you realize what you really value most. Absolutely. And how, and how do you honor those values as you choose where you spend one third of your waking hours or more right. in the work you do? Right. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll go on the other side of that too and say a lot of the people that are being laid off right now, mm -hmm. if you've been laid off from a position, that will change your behavior yep. going into the next position. It will change your thinking of how companies operate. It will change how you view loyalty to an organization. Yeah. And so for those who have been laid off, especially if it was done in a really bad way, oh. which we're seeing again, toxic, you know, so yeah. bad. Yeah. But you have to understand you might be trying to be positive through it and all of that. And absolutely, I think that's a really great way to be, but also understand it's going to change you. And you have to understand that like going through that next, going to that next position, you're going to have some hesitancy. There are going to be some things that are going to make you react because you've gone through a layoff already. Right. Right. It also, it also brings up the importance of knowing what questions to ask as you're going through that interview process again at every level, right? Starting at the, you know, HR recruiter level mm -hmm. and then all the way up to uh, wherever it ends in, in depending on your, your level. Um, but knowing what questions to ask to be sure that what you care about most matters to them as well, right? That you yes. can feel a soulful fit mm -hmm. when you get that offer and you've been able to check off all the, the boxes that it really does align with who you are now and what you want and where you Absolutely. want to go. Absolutely. Yeah. This has been a great conversation, Julia. I, um, I, I, I know there's this, so much more. We can there say. is so much more, you know, we might have to do part two on this one. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, I would love for us to just kind of wrap this in a little bit of a bow for everybody and ask you to give us some of your best uh, key takeaways or best tips for for people who are maybe struggling with a toxic environment, toxic mm -hmm. people, that sort of thing. What what what's your first tip? So I think we've I think we've said this multiple times. I'm going to yeah. reiterate it because I think it's so important. Focus on what is real, and this can be done simply if it's people oriented. Write that person's name down and journal out, write out, talk out, whatever you need to do, what is going on? Why do you feel the way that you do all of that? The environment, the team, whatever it is, get it out. Focus on what is really the thing that is frustrating for you and keep asking yourself why. So you're kind of self-coaching, basically. Keep asking yourself why and keep drilling down until you really understand what is at the heart of what is frustrating you. Is it something that you can control or is it an external factor that you have absolutely no control over? Because that will also help change your perspective about the situation and will allow you to reframe. So I love that. I love that. <laughs> that's, that's so important. <clears throat> Drilling down till you get to the core. And if it is not in your control, Yes. Yeah. Then you can release it because there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then you get to make a choice. 
right? Right. Right. About and I'll tell what you, you do next as a result of not being able to control that situation. Yeah. And I had a manager that for a long time I would have classified as toxic. And once I had a better understanding of the situation, I was like, oh, first of all, they're just not a good people manager and they've never been trained. So I can't hold that against them mm -hmm. um, because they they weren't getting the support that they needed. Right. But then we also just had a clash of personality. And I was like, I can't fault them for that either. I am who I am. They are who they are. Right. And we're, we just don't mesh. And that's okay. And the minute that I figured that out, oh man, my perspective toward that person absolutely shifted. And it was such a better working relationship yeah. moving and past that. Th because the way you communicate shifts when you realize absolutely. what's really underlying all of that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we get to make different choices yep. about how we approach the situation. Yes. 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 Okay. My take other takeaway. <laughs> yeah. Takeaway number two. Uh, <clears throat> we've mentioned this a little bit, but if you have the ability, get support. Um, so that's a coach like me, a coach like Maria. There are a lot of us out there. Um, and support doesn't have to come from somebody like me. I think the value to having a coach is you get an unbiased opinion um, and somebody that can walk you through the situation and ask you questions because we're not in it. Um, sometimes when you're talking to friends and family, they, they can fuel the fire for you in a way that's not helpful. Um, so consider that. Also, uh, counseling, therapy. If you have that available through the place that you're working, um, utilize it because again, if you're in a toxic environment, you need to talk it out. You need to figure out what is going on. And so if you have um, the resources for that, then absolutely take advantage of that. If therapy or coaching is not within your budget, there are so many resources out there, so many free resources for people or really low cost things to help you work through this and can give you prompts and all of that. You just have to seek it out. Um, and, you know, search for it and all of that. But a lot of people like me and Maria, we have free resources for people. This yeah. podcast is one of them, yeah. you know, and so you seek that out and utilize it for yourself to help you kind of self coach if coaching isn't something that is within your budget. Yeah. So yeah, check out Julia's website, mine. There's, she's so right. There are so many <laughs> free resources out there. Uh, these podcasts, they're every week. I have a, a different expert on. We talk about different aspects of uh, transition and career cha and life choices. So, yeah, uh, the support you get is really critical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you should not be a lone wolf if you're going through what you feel is either not a good fit but you don't know what to do about it or it's a toxic work environment and you don't know what to do about it. Mm -hmm. There are people who can help you figure that out and they, they could be a mentor, mm -hmm. right? They could be a coach like us, like Julia said, uh, or, you know, there's so much help. There's so yes. much help out there. Yes. All right. Um, I, wait, I have, I have a little hack for people that I just oh. thought about as you were saying that, there are a lot of coaches that go through what's called ICF certification and mm -hmm. they have to do a certain number of hours. A lot of times people will offer that for a very low rate to get their hours in. So yeah. if, if finances are something that are a struggle for you, especially if you've been laid off and you're trying to figure all these things out, go on LinkedIn and just search ICF, try to find somebody that's getting certified and Good contact idea. them because they will probably have really reasonable prices before they hit their certification. Good, good idea. And that just brought up another idea. <clears throat> if you've been laid off by a company who has offered you the opportunity to work with a career coach as part of your severance package, yes. take them up on the offer. Yes. I, I consult with a company who offers that <clears throat> companies uh, engage to offer that. And, and part of my business is working with people who have been laid off. I've been through it myself. So I know what that feels like. 
But mm -hmm. uh, if you've been offered that kind of an opportunity, don't pass it up. Mm -mm. Take it. If nothing else, your resume is going to get edited. And uh, exactly. And your LinkedIn profile huge. will get better. And, <clears throat> and you'll yeah. have an opportunity to talk some of this out with someone who's probably been there. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. One more tip. That's what we have time for. <laughs> okay. So this is my tip for once you are transitioning. Okay. So, you know, you have a new job, all of that. Take a break. Take time in between the current position and the new position. And if it has been particularly toxic, give yourself as much time as you can. And I'm not talking a week. I'm talking three, four weeks, like a month or more. It sounds like a lot, but I'm going to tell you, it's going to take you at least a week, if not longer, to just come down from leaving that position. Because you have to remember, and this is true of any transition that you make, by the way, not yeah. just toxic, but even if you're going from a good position to a good position, you have to grieve the previous position. Even if it was a positive situation, you're leaving people, you're leaving a situation that you've been with for a long time. And so you have to give yourself time to separate from that and grieve it. And it still will take time, but highly recommend giving yourself space to just be and do things yeah. that you want to do, you know, essentially bring yourself back to life if you've been in a toxic situation. So if you have the means to do it, plan for it, do it because I, I'm telling you, it'll be so good for your mental health moving into the yeah. new position. Yeah. That is such good advice. Um, you know, <clears throat> decompressing from one thing before you launch into the next thing uh, is so important. And you, you're right, regardless of the kind of transition you're making, this could be a life transition, a career transition. Yes. And there are so many things that fall under life, right? Um, that, re that require you to just take, yeah, that, take that, that breathe. right? <laughs> I've been through so many of these transitions in my life. It is, it's, that is like the best advice. That's gold right there, Julia. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. If you can take a break because mm -hmm. it will, you heard Julia say earlier that she didn't realize she was burned out until she left. Yeah. Don't wait for that. Yeah. And but it took me, you, I did not take a break. Yeah. If you I recognize like that, you need a break. Yeah. And yeah. it took me three months, three, four months into yeah. the new position before I finally relaxed into it. Isn't it nice that we learn lessons as we make our choices? <laughs> learn <laughs> learn from be, our mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Learn from our mistakes. Yeah. 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 Julia, I've enjoyed this conversation with you. You and I um, have a heart for people who are going through these tough times in their careers. And I want uh, I want everyone to know that there is, we're out here for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. there are lots of free resources that uh, that either one of us can share with you but I want you to learn right now what Julia's website is. So Julia, your website's the best place for people to connect with you, right? Yeah, I think that's the best place to learn more about what I do and what I have available. Uh, if you are on LinkedIn, please connect with me as well. Um, and let me know that you, you know, saw me through Maria's podcast or some of the lives that we're doing. Uh, I love being connected with people on LinkedIn and seeing their journey and their career and all of that. And I respond to messages and answer questions. So I'm happy to do that as well. That's great. So Julia's website is ridethetidecollective.com. And you'll see links for that uh, in the show notes below. Julia, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. It's um, it's always It's always good to have a a heartfelt conversation about a tough subject so other people know that um, they're not alone. No, 
No, thank you so much for having me. This is a hard topic. And for anybody listening, going through it, you're not alone. We Not everybody has been there, but a lot of people have experienced it yeah. in some way and just get whatever support that you need to help you take at least one step in the right direction. Right, right. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and I want to thank everyone who is watching or listening um, because I really appreciate your being a part of this community. And if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave a comment, click a star, what, however you can. Let us know uh, what you think about the conversation we've had today. And as I said at the top of the show, I love creating and sharing resources for women. And as a life and career coach, I work with women to help them navigate challenging times more quickly and gracefully. So if something in this res episode resonates and you'd like to continue this conversation or share your situation, as I said, the links below will put you in touch with me or Julia, and I invite you to continue this conversation in my private Facebook group, The Career Transition Roadmap. So again, look for the link below. And then let's meet again here next Wednesday, same time, same place, because I believe it's our time to thrive. So let's thrive together. Till next time, I'm Maria Tomas Keegan, helping you turn transition into triumph.